it worked. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Emily Templewood. I'm an undergraduate at Loyola University, and I'm Kailana on the English Wikipedia, where I've been an editor since 2007. And I'm here today to talk about bridging the gender gap with women scientists, both online and offline. It'll be fun. So we really need to increase our coverage of women scientists on Wikipedia, and that's kind of the whole point of this. Uh, Wikipedia is missing far more articles on women overall than men overall. Joseph Regal did a study a couple of years ago that showed that Wikipedia was missing 11% of female biographies and only 5% of male biographies in one of the major biographical dictionaries that's been published in the Western world. That's huge. We're missing twice the number of female articles than we are male articles, and this totally extends to biographies of scientists as well. And another study, or in the same study, he showed that another list of biographies had the same pattern. We were missing twice as many women's biographies as men's biographies. And we found that we're missing a ridiculous number of biographies that fall under the purview of Wiki Project Women Scientists. We have 1,500 articles that have been tagged, and we've tagged most of them, but the main biographical dictionary of women scientists that's published in the Western world includes 3,000 notable women scientists. So that's a pretty big gap. And we have a work list that has thousands of articles on it. It's ridiculous. So we have this huge workload that not a lot of people have been working on, at least until recently when we founded Wiki Project Women Scientists. We also have really low quality women scientists articles, so that's great. We only have five featured articles amongst those 1,500 and 10 good articles. The example that I've been giving recently is the article on Rosalind Franklin, who was one of the people who discovered the structure of DNA, got 2.1 million views last month when she was the Google Doodle. Uh, and the article is B-class, and it's missing a lot of citations, which is really not a good picture that Wikipedia is presenting to the world. We also have two top important star class articles on Sally Foster and Vera Rubin, who were pioneers in their fields. And this just goes to show the systemic bias that has been affecting articles on women scientists. This is totally unacceptable. So we've banded together to start and fix this. Wiki Project Women Scientists currently has 22 members, most of whom are women, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and it includes a really broad group of people, including several professional scientists, which is fantastic. Uh, and its aim is, of course, to increase the coverage of women scientists across Wikipedia. Uh, if you want, you can check out our work list. It's really long, but sources for these women are also available online. Um, but one of the things that we've been doing recently as well is to combat deletion of women scientist articles. One of the problems that we found consistently across the board is that articles about women and women's issues are deleted a lot more often than articles about men or more gender neutral issues. So we've seen articles about perfectly notable women scientists nominated for deletion just effectively because they're women, uh, which is unacceptable. So having a group with article alerts to band together and make sure that these articles are referenced well and meet the notability guidelines and have people to argue for them is really, really important. And that's a role that hadn't been filled before Wiki Project Women Scientists. But one thing that we've also been doing, or mostly I've been doing, is outreach to contemporary women scientists, which are a group that's totally untapped right now. We're trying to onboard notable women. Uh, the example I like to give is Jane Shelby Richardson, who is a fantastic protein scientist. Uh, she developed the diagrams that we use to, to represent proteins on paper, which is kind of a big deal. You can see one up in the upper right-hand corner, it's very pretty. Um, and she's been contributing to Wikipedia for the past couple of years. She's an expert. She's an expert on proteins, and she's an expert writer, and she can be an expert reviewer to make sure that our content is accurate, which is fantastic. They can also donate images, and they can also be advocates both for themselves and for other women scientists. Now, we have the typical conflict of interest problems that we do with any contemporary notable person who edits Wikipedia. But I found in general that contemporary women scientists, when approached about Wikipedia, are happy to at least donate images of their major discoveries, donate images of themselves, and contribute sources about themselves that we may not be able to find on our own, which is really fantastic. They're also, in my experience, willing to suggest other women that deserve articles. Say, oh, my colleague so-and-so, she doesn't have an article, should she? And oftentimes, she should. Um, 
And contemporary women scientists lack articles. I've met dozens of them that deserve articles that are totally notable under our professor's guidelines and just haven't been covered yet, partially because they're contemporary and because they're women. So this is a problem we're also working to fix through outreach and through online efforts. Um, I'm also piloting a program to outreach to women science students in the US at my university at Loyola. Student scientists are an awesome resource for both Wiki Project women scientists and other Wiki projects. Obviously, students are activists, as there's always some cause or another that we're being asked to support. Um, but that means that they're a lot more likely to go along with something that's a very feminist cause like this. Also, students have free time. Uh, it may not look like it, but we're always procrastinating. So that's another resource. And our universities have access to JSTOR. We have access to thousands and thousands of books, which I found invaluable in my own writing, and I know that other students do as well. And they're also tapped into the free knowledge movement more than really any other generation. My generation was raised on Wikipedia. We used it in elementary school and middle school and high school, and now we're having a chance to give back. And that's a really powerful in initiative for people my age. So what I'm piloting is with the is a, a collaboration with the Women in Science and Math group at Loyola University Chicago. And it's a fairly new group, but it's got, I don't even know how many women, it's a ton, uh, who are in all sorts of scientific and math fields. Some of them are pre-medicine, some of them are going into research, and they're all really passionate about science, and a lot of them are really passionate about education. And the, pi the program I'm going to pilot is a slightly larger scale wiki party to get women together every month and get them editing and get them writing about other women scientists. So we benefit by getting more articles about these women and by getting new contributors and these women get role models. And they provide role models for other young women who may not know that these women scientists are out there. So it's a pretty fantastic idea and I'm sure I'll update you in a year's time on how that's been going. So I wanted to talk about the impact so far of our project on Wikipedia. Uh, one of the coolest things we've done is save the Barbara McClintock article at Featured Article Review. Uh, Barbara McClintock was the 1988 Nobel Prize recipient in medicine and an absolutely brilliant geneticist. Uh, and her article was completely unreferenced. So a few of us collaborated and saved her article so we would have five featured articles instead of four. Um, we also doubled our number of good articles in less than a year. We've only been in existence since November 2012. And since then, we've added five more GAs to our docket. And I'm hoping we'll get even more as the year goes on. We also had more did you knows than I actually wanted to sit down and count. But it was several long columns. And you can see that at our recognized content page. It's pretty incredible. And there is a huge impact for readers of these articles. A lot of them get really low views. And PowerPoint ate the number of views that this article gets. But from last I checked, it's in the low hundreds every month, which seems like it's not having a huge impact on the readers, right? But as it turns out, we've seen that when we put these articles on Did You Know, they actually get three to 5,000 views in general, which means that people are interested in these women scientists, they just don't know how to find their articles, which is a problem I'm not quite sure how to fix, and is perhaps reflective of the invisibility of women scientists in society at large. But when we get these Did You Knows, which is a kind of ridiculous number, we are reaching thousands and thousands of readers with these women who have been previously invisible. And it's still important to write these articles because, as I said before, young women need role models of scientists, and often these articles are the most comprehensive source online. Uh, when I Google some of these women scientists, I get nothing. And I have to go to my big stacks of biographical dictionaries to find details on the woman who founded the science of paleoneurology. As it turns out, she's not really on the internet. Uh, which is kind of a problem. So we can help increase the visibility of these women and provide a resource for people who may not have access to those huge stacks of biographical dictionaries that I happen to have at Loyola. And I want to close by asking you to join us. Add yourself to the list at Wiki Project Women Scientists. Watch list us. Or you could start a Wiki Project in your language Wikipedia. I would love to talk to you about that. Help us with translation efforts and improve or start an article. Uh, these are just a few of the women scientists who have articles right now, but we're literally missing 1,500 articles. So we could do with every little bit of help we could get. So anybody have questions? Um, we
We are in Q&A section, and anybody want to raise a question? Um, thanks, and it's great to see another like really kind of targeted initiative on on these gender uh, um, issues. Well, thanks. Um, and I wanted to uh, ask you about if you could elaborate a little bit more on what happened with the um, Barbara McClintock, the the I guess sure. fiasco or whatever the problem at, at featured article review. Sure. So uh, somebody I forget who. Um, sorry, I'm not good with remembering everybody's username. Someone nominated it for featured article review because it had no inline references, which was a really huge problem. Uh, and it turned out it also had a little bit of copyright violation in there, so uh, a couple of us took it on and referenced everything. There's a bunch of major biographies that were written about her because, you know, noblest, um, and we had her papers and everything. So uh, it was a pretty concerted effort, um, but yeah, it was just unreferenced and we had to rewrite some plagiarism. So it was worth it. Hi. Hi, I'm Vishnu from India. Hi. Yeah, uh, wonderful presentation, well, and thank you. especially about your point about uh, having these articles in regional language Wikipedia's. Mm -hmm. We would definitely like to take it up, take it up. But from India, one very important source that we are now trying to uh, uh, bring under Creative Commons is a book called Leelavati's Daughters, mm -hmm. which has the women scientists in India all profiles done. So this is a publication by Indian Academy of Sciences. So we're talking to them. It would be wonderful to have their entire collection on this project and also in Indian languages. Just wow, comment. that's yeah. awesome. I'm yeah. so glad to hear that. And we have really terrible coverage of uh, non-Western women scientists. Like, God yeah. forbid you're a woman scientist from Botswana. You're never going to get written about on Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's great to hear. Thank you. Any more questions? So, uh, in covering these these sort of topics, uh, you know, like I, I I like to, you know, I mean, we could imagine an ideal world where you don't have to be male or female to write about these sort of topics. So, I'm wondering about uh, what the participation in in which Wiki Project Women Scientists looks like. Are are there a lot of uh, male writers in this area that take it upon themselves, or is it primarily women writing about these women scientists? Uh, it's mostly women writing about other women. I think we have two or three male members uh, and a couple of people who don't disclose their gender, but uh, we're pretty much all female. So if you're male, come join us. Women scientists are very interesting. We would love to have you. I'd like to follow up on that question. I mean, do you yeah. think that that's a problem, or do you think that that's a solution to the gender? I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that, like because there's a lot of talk about different solutions about bringing, bringing more women in and having those contents, or kind of changing the culture there. And, and yeah. yeah, well, it's definitely a more woman-friendly space than the all-male wiki projects, so it's kind of refreshing. Uh, I would love to see a wiki project women scientists that's 50/50. That would be ideal for me, uh, because everyone should care about biographies of women scientists because the, they're a part of our history and they're a part of our collective consciousness. Um, but it, it, it's a different space. Um, and I don't think it's a bad thing that it's all female. It's not an ideal thing. If it were all male, I would have more of an issue. We still got time, so we welcome more questions. Hi, that was an awesome presentation. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. I was just wondering how well you think kind of the, the format of the group would, um, I guess, port over to other subject areas that aren't as well researched as perhaps scientists, because as you said, at Loyola, you've got um, quite a good set of references for women scientists. And how would we go if we wanted to like set up a project about women's chefs or something where there's you know probably more popular culture references? Um, how do you think the community would, would respond to that? 
Well, I think if you have the references, the community will respond the way it does to any other article about women, a woman with references, which is probably try to delete it and then walk away sheepishly when they can't. Um, but I think it's definitely harder when there's not a concerted effort to bring more women into a field because there have been all of these governmental initiatives over the past few years to bring women into science and technology and math. Um, so there's been a concerted effort, like, let's write books about women scientists. Let's have, you know, women scientists talk to young women. And that's not, you're right, that's not true with, like, women chefs. Um, I don't, I don't know how, oh. I don't know how to fix that other than by writing books about them and finding more sources. Um, but I guess you'd have to organize people and fight for your articles the way that I guess anybody else does. Does that answer your question? Absolutely, yeah, it's really inspiring. Yeah. Thank oh, you thanks. very much. I don't have a phone, that's the problem. <laughs> if I did, I would get lost a lot less often. Yeah, anybody wants to ask? Uh, when you mentioned that um, when there are articles about women, the community tends to delete it. I just wanted to understand like, what's the reasoning behind it, or do they have to have a reason to delete it, or are they just hostile? Do they just sure. hate women scientists? What, I'm, I'm not that familiar with the, the, with the uh, community, I guess. Yeah, no, it's a combination of several different factors. Um, one example that I like to give when people ask me things like this is about an Estonian scientist. Uh, her name was Reen Tam, and she is a geneticist and an edu a science educator in Estonia. So she's got two strikes against her in the deletion debates. She's a woman, and she's from a non-English speaking country. Um, so her article was nominated for deletion, despite the fact that she's she meets our guidelines because she's been covered in so many different news articles in Estonian and not so much in English. Um, so people argued it out for about a week. And uh, they came to the conclusion that even though the person who nominated it said that she wasn't important enough, that there were enough sources that said that she was. Um, so a lot of the time, people try to delete women scientists by saying they aren't important enough and they don't have enough coverage, even when that's patently not true. Um, please don't try to delete women scientists when there's references. Uh, so it, yeah, it, and I think it's because, in general, women's articles are more likely to be deleted, just for whatever cultural and community reasons that is. And it's unfortunate. Anybody? So um, thank you very much. Thank you. And we will move on. To, uh, we will have a break now. So may everyone um, have to leave this room. And maybe you can chat or exchange your opinions outside. And we'll see you in the afternoon. Thank you.